Hello and welcome back to another episode of Xenonauts 2. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing, guess what, the Xenonauts 2 blind playthrough on the highest difficulty, time for crash site 13, which I will call uh, the slippy staircase. It looks like a mountain and you can easily rush off of that uh, if you're not uh, if you're not careful. Today we're going to um, bruise the enemies by basically sending our Dragonfly 1 aircraft there and hopefully just shooting everything down. We got a couple of first timers with us. Wurstebob, uh, for instance, uh, is going to be a rifleman. And I think we had another one. Oh yeah, King Jabe is with us as a shield bearer. So welcome both. Good luck, gentlemen. Let's hope you make it out alive. And we are finding more UFOs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That those ones are nasty. These are little interceptor uh, interceptors. Out of curiosity, can we? Are they ready? Yes, they do have their weapons. Good, good. So we're just going to fly in. Are going to shoot all of our missiles and are going to fly back. That's essentially it. Um, in the meantime, we're going to do the tactical battle. You can see there's a lot going on. Many, many UFOs popping up left and right. Okay, time to eliminate all enemies. We landed sort of at the edge here. Yep. And I would like to test something, which is, is this here going to suppress them as well, just like the flashbang does? Yes, stun. 9 plus suppression. That's great. I like that a lot. Orsabob moves up and does he get his first kill is the question. Well, he certainly hits. Getting that sector down. I like the fact that we can stun them and suppress them. Okay, so Epi moves out. Nice little shot. And puts him on into unconscious. Another shot. Okay, fair enough. Uncle Nuber. Opens up all of uh, the terrain, which is important for us. King Jobe moves in. Yeah, I think Zoe just killed him. Okay, moving up. Zero. Moves to here. Very good. Nick, Nick, the party snack. Dilly moves to over here. And Tony moves over here. Okay, cool. Life is good. 
we solidly arrived here. Could have used the staircase uh, to get on top of the roof on this building. That would have given us a better line of sight, but okay, whatever. It's never a wrong decision to just remove walls. Specifically since typically in Xenonauts we do have the ranged advantage. There are no snipers in the enemy teams. So if we can keep enough range and prevent uh, obstructions from uh, being in our way, we are actually better off than the enemy. Okay, lots of enemy activities. I don't even know why it takes so long. Like I said, it seems like the game has a garbage collection or memory collection problem where the longer you play just the more intense uh, the turns are taking this here is not different to what we have played before right enemy has overwatch there definitely was a bit of a shootout I assume some of the civilians had guns and have just, yeah, taken shots. Good. Removing cover. Remove even more cover. And we're okay. Where is the second? Okay, we can remove cover over here. I want to keep that ladder. There we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you are removing cover. Good, he's suppressed. Could move all the way in, but that would be risky. I don't think that's a smart idea. Instead, it's a case for the G. One shot, one kill, the G strikes again. Good, we're moving up. Bringing the fire line with us. Continuing to move up. Um, how about we're moving up here? The G moves over here. Anchor is down, very nice. Of course, the bob is not yet as quick as the others, so... Needs to hunker down. And we're good. We've been fighting against sectoids lately quite a bit, so I wonder also how the uh, how the different spawn rates are uh, are implemented, because sectoids seem to be on every second mission, while say 
for instance, mantids, who seem to be less problematic than them, haven't been there at all in the mid game. Okay, that sounds like one of those healing flying things. Hmm. Yeah, it definitely sounds like more of those healing hovercrafts. Don't even know what the names are, but you know what I mean, right? mechanical creatures that just continue to heal and can suppress us. Okay. Well. Uncle Nuber finally finds the target. That's a good removal. I like it. Knick-knack the party snack. Oh no, wait. He's heavy. We need snipers. The G. One shot, one kill. I ordered a kill. I asked the G. The G delivered. Alright, Jim moves up. Widowmaker moves up. King Jobbe moves up. We are starting to move over. Yeah, you can definitely see the difference between a colonel and a normal soldier. All right, back in action. A little bit of phone call in between. Now we want some more of our soldiers up there. Nicknack the party snack. Does exactly that. Runs through fire. Good. Difficult. Um, I would definitely like to get the snipers up of, on the rooftop. It's kind of a no-brainer. And Dilly starts to move. And Aziza begins to catch up. Good shit. Let's continue. Well, of course, the enemies have found us. Catch us in the middle of our transition. I don't like that. And this will have some consequences. The G does not take a shot from a sector lightly. Or certainly not from one who has a pistol in his hands. We do have a big fat sniper and 
the guy will need to learn to respect our range. Like I said, there is so much value in long range. Okay. That indeed was funny. Okay, not a surprise. We know more of them are here. Nick Nick moves up. And we are killing them right away. Zoe moves up. Aziza moves up. I think Epitilius with their massive movement would actually help over here just with another overwatch. Where's the boop? Moves up. And the front line does exactly what the front line is supposed to do, which is front lining. Right, no one here. Hungering down and blocking this just in case someone is shooting at us. Uncle Uber moves up. Pistol in hand, and we're good. All right, very soon the stand batons uh, that we had for outdoor combat will be exchanged for uh, for indoor combat. And that means we'll kill a lot of, uh, we'll stun a lot of them. Uh, well, currently they are not really stunned. <laughs> okay. Frozen in a dying animation. Look at that. Okay. Nice. That's one hit. And that's a kill. Moving up. In the meantime... Zero is moving all the way up here. Billy G is moving over.
Yeah, I think we're just going out of uh, line of sight there. King Jobe begins to move up as well. Okay, we're moving up. And that's the end of the turn. Good. So there is potentially one or two more of uh, them kind of in here. Uh oh. That's a solid hit. Although we had a few overwatches, Jim still got hit and no one reacted. That's unfortunate. All right. Payback time. Look at you, enemy spotted. And guess what? We don't want to have any return fire. So there is the stun. Moving in. Hit. Put him unconscious. Very nice. The arm moving up. Good, we theoretically have more grenades, but for now we don't need them. Worsipo moves down. And we take our third sniper also over here. All right, cool. Lots of movement inside of the UFO. Abductors have three levels, as I learned, so. It definitely could be that there are another four or five, maybe six enemies in there. The amount of aliens on the highest difficulty is truly remarkable.
Good. Jim and Epi. I think we're going to take Epi over here. Mainly due to the speed and also because we have two stun grenades. Which is exactly what I was hoping for. Okay, so far we're doing well. We got our snipers, that's good, and we're going to have some cover for our back. End of turn for now. We're going to slowly dismantle the lower section with our laser rifle. Good, first hit, opens that one up. Second hit, opens that one up. Stunning the sector hit. Very nice. We officially have captured the first lore now. We are slowly but surely moving in. The idea would be to move in with enough of our uh, own forces, so... In that case... For starters... Double check that no one is here. Good. No one is here. Even better. Good. And just in case someone comes from any direction, we are basically ready. Good. These guys <laughs> are now launching a counterattack. They don't like that their friend has been just piled on. But no such luck. We were ready. We had enough overwatch shots. And realize how I put both of the shields just behind um, a wall. So even stray shots wouldn't fully hit us.
Okay. So, everybody needs to move in. The three snipers are staying outside, and we're doing fine. More sectors are moving from A to B, but that uh, won't help them. Got a shot back. I don't like it. But one of them is stunned. And we'll teach the other one how to behave. Spoiler. Does not include shooting at others. I think I destroyed the console. Okay, let's move in. move up. Cool. End of turn. We still have the steering room, so there is, yeah, one more room. Heal up. Happy moves in. Big fat stun and suppression. I like it. Move to the side. And hit this guy, fantastic. One unconscious. And this guy is getting pummeled, I like it. Thunderton's very effective. I think we got ourselves four stunt individuals. The new upgraded um, grenades are actually quite good, but there is a however. 
they do not penetrate armor very well. Which you can see that most of the enemies appear to have around 30 armor because uh, they I think deal 40 stun damage and it just bounces off of their armor. Good. Let's do the after action report. Ursubub and King Jobbe got a medal and Nicknack the Party Snack finally got his designation for 10 missions. Good job. So captured Mentarg 1, captured Psyam 3, 5 captured, captured Sekton. Oh wow, 7. <laughs> 7 overall. And yeah, 21 enemies. It, it's definitely noticeable just how many enemies uh, you are seeing. Good, reinforced uh, plating. What exactly does that mean? Oh yeah, Phantom. Um... Very good. Well, in the meantime, since we're still quite far away from the next influx of money, for starters, let's just get rid of almost all of the Psyon corpses and all of the Sectan corpses. Captured Psyon. Captured Mentark. Captured Sacton. I'm just trying to make money. That's it. Plain and simple. Plasma weapons. Plenty thereof. Seems alien uh, aliens nowadays are only using plasma weapons. So 800. Let's get rid of the cyber drone wreck uh, wreckages. So they are valuable. And all of that. Mentar Corpse on top of it. 930. I like what I'm seeing. And just a little bit more lenient. So we're going for a mill here. Okay, as you can imagine, that is always quite painful to just get all of that money. But what do we really want? Exosuits? I definitely want some of them. But what else do we want? Netkit? Yes, that has a high, um, a high priority. The actuator module? Yes. That is important. Buzzer, uh, buzzer jetpacks later. I definitely like the idea of reinforced platings. Seven hundred fifty thousand. Base upgrades. I like the surgical center. Higher survival chance is important. So that's 500 grand gone. We could upgrade the nanotech workshop on top of it. Essentially making us more efficient. But that costs 50 alloys, so I don't know if that's really worthwhile. Let's start with the surgical center because I think that's really important. Continuing with the actuaire module, because that gives us unlimited access and it essentially just increases the strength. 
So we're down to 300. We could take one of those exosuits to test them. And I think we wanted definitely one more raw sniper rifle. And then an advanced medikit. Good upgrades overall. Will take us a few days to get everything uh, going. And this year, this. Um, first of all, now let's turn to the air fight. This year will be a short fight. We only want to. to shoot once and then basically fuck off and then rinse and repeat. I hope that we can destroy an interceptor with the warheads. still have no we don't have anything so there we go there we go there we go so we're going to repeat that we filled up launch aircraft yep let's go Okay, we're going to have another attack. I'm just trying hit and run now because the interceptors are too strong. Basically, our squadron is at below 50% health, so what am I supposed to do? I can just hope that the interceptors are not going to regenerate in between. Everybody is empty. Very good. One of the interceptors is down. aircraft to here or taking the Americas launching that okay one three four
let's see what we can do here. Are they fully loaded? No, they are not. Good. Again, interceptors are coming closer. So if we play our cards right, that should be six attacks against one interceptor. Hopefully getting it down. See, if you need to resort to these stupid tactics, something is wrong with uh, air combat. Wouldn't you agree? Why would you? Why would you do that? Good, and we're going a third time, fourth time actually. Our hit and run tactic seems to work okay. But that, that can't be kind of uh, the normal procedure. Scepter tries to evade, bomb, bomb, bomb. And we're continuing. It's stupid. I can't believe that that is really how it's supposed to be played. Destroyer and fighters. Oh, wow. Oh, I, vague, I distinctly remember these uh, guys. Okay, one, two, three. We're focusing on the fighter. One, two, three. All right, fighter tries to wait. Good. We are slowly but surely getting them down. What a stupid way of playing the air game. Maybe once we're full health and I actually can get 
uh, a little bit better traction on the enemies. It won't be as stupid. Good. One on the destroyer. The other two on the fighter, because I think that's enough. Plop, plop, and plop. Bam, fighter, bomb, destroyer, okay. Tail until overland and then go and get him down. By the way, I wish it wouldn't only go up, but also go down. It seems that there are very few missions to actually reduce uh, the panic later in the game. Eat this destroyer. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Very nice. Good. More chances for us to actually capture them. And I also hope that it actually reduces panic. I think we can go in with the exact same team as before. Don't see the need for a lot of changes. In terms of research, we're just generating money at this point. Increased surgical center is good. The actuator module. I would love to take that soon. 25 strings is great. We soon want exosuits as well. And I think the only thing that our um, our ground team needs is a little bit more is a little bit more exosuit armor. So in terms of armor we should be fine exude stalker yep equipment those better pistols might be not too bad 35 stun is actually quite good we definitely want fusion jet uh, upgrades and we want the plates upgrade now that is important for next uh for next turn these two are a million gone already this here is overpriced really that it's way too expensive Good. By the way, I would say you start with a pistol in hand. Forcible slowly begins to have enough strength. That's good. Yeah, Grenadier is fine. 
Grenadier definitely could use a targeting module and that extra strength that we were talking about. Oh, and we now have... Uh, oh, oh, well, that changes a bit. So for starters, give me that module for Dilly G. Thank you. And that only weighs 12. Not bad. I think the snipers generally should consider wearing that module. Alright, zero takes that module as well. Remove the grenade. Yeah, we don't have the upgraded sniper yet. I am wondering... Look, if we're just putting this in here, secondary weapon would be open, right? Right. What are we going to put into the secondary slot? I still pistol that recharges, certainly not a bad idea. Good. Hewlett has the option to knock someone out. That's okay as well. I have to wonder, do we have other good weapons that we could use? As offhand weapons. Aziza will get the laser. I think we're just going to use the same pistol. For someone with a hundred strength, this is how it looks like you can just carry everything. Let's hope the modules are as good as they promise to be. But listen, the Grenadier definitely would need something along the lines. Less grenades, but a module. Not perfect, but it's okay. But we're going to use actual med kits on Worship Open Appy. We 
which means the actual front line should be fine. Let's just double check what this does. Automated module automatically dispenses healing nanites when a soldier carrying is wounded, causing them to regenerate 25 hit points per turn and curing any bleed uh, wounds, which is good. So we just need to withdraw after being basically shot down. And this will save us from always needing to run to someone. Good. Very good. Well, that is what we have at the moment. I think we can further increase the alloy plates, which is fantastic. Get another sniper rifle. That should be good as well. And elsewise, I really like the two laser, um, heavy lasers, because they are a nice little mixture of dealing damage and being able to remove cover. So maybe we can keep one or two of uh, them. If we have enough money, we can certainly uh, get that Gauss machine gun. But the laser isn't too far off, right? So, I mean, that's 50 points of damage and minus eight armor. And it penetrates armor better. So for highly armored targets, they are actually a little bit better good look guys that's the end of today's episode thank you for watching next time we're going to uh, explore a destroyer but until then have a good one if you like xenonauts too feel free to leave a comment and a like down below that never hurts and see you in today's goodbye